Hey church, as we explore Christian missionaries in our devotional series, I want to go way back to one of the first missionaries. And we learn about him in the book of Acts, and his name is Philip. And not to be confused with Philip from the uh, Gospels, the Apostle Philip, this is another man named Philip. And we see in Acts chapter 6 that he was appointed as a deacon uh, in the early Jerusalem church. And in Acts chapter 7, we see his fellow deacon, Stephen, stoned to death, the first Christian martyr, and then a huge persecution break out against the church. And in eight, uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 1, we read this. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Persecutions happened. All of the followers of Jesus are scattered except the apostles and, and, and they're scattered all throughout Judea and Samaria uh, because they need to escape. But God's people and God's message can't be stopped that easily, can it? Verses 4 to 8 tell us that Philip continued on his mission. Have a look. Verse 4, chapter 8. Uh, Those who had been scattered preached the word everywhere they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the message there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Now last year during the pandemic, we were introduced to many words and phrases, right? Like new normal and stuff like that. Uh, But one of those phrases or words, which you may or may not like, was pivot. Right? This idea of pivot is to change direction quickly and react to the circumstances around us. As a church, we tried to pivot with every new announcement that were made, so did our government, and so did you, uh, no doubt. Well, pivot, right? Now, Philip, here he performs a masterful pivot, doesn't he? He is scattered, sent away from his church, his people, his home, his mission, and his plans. Everything was altered, but he pivoted. He knew, he understood that God's plan was for the mission to continue and so he took it with him everywhere he went. And the end product was joy in that city in Samaria. Acts chapter 8 continues with another story of him in Samaria. He shares the gospel with an influential sorcerer named Simon who then becomes a Christian and astonishes everyone around Philip has an incredible ministry in Samaria, as we see from these first few verses. But then it comes time to move again in quite a dramatic fashion. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Right, so so Philip's killing it there in Samaria. And I'm sure Philip's wondering when this angel appears to him, What? I've just uprooted my whole life and I've moved to Samaria and I'm doing really well. People are responding. People are coming to faith. The gospel is taking root. And now you want me to move again? Despite possibly feeling this, he obeys and he heads off, not knowing what God has in store or why God is moving him on. Then we see why. On the way, he meets a man from Ethiopia who just happened to be reading the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. You know, that part that predicts the suffering of the Messiah. And he's in his chariot and he looks around and he says, can anyone interpret this for me? Can anyone explain to me what this means? And here's Philip. Talk about the right place at the right time. Philip explains the passage. He brings him to Jesus and baptizes him there on the spot. God moved him on again. And Philip kept preaching all the way down to Caesarea. The passage tells us, and then the story ends, saying that the Ethiopian man went on his way, rejoicing. Now, of course, this isn't a coincidence, is it, that this man was reading a scroll at the same time that Philip, who knew the scroll's content, happened to be there? It's not a coincidence. It is a carefully constructed mission planned by God himself, using a reliable, obedient servant, Philip. Each time he leaves a place, we hear the people have joy and are rejoicing in the truth of God. And what I love about the story of Philip is that he exhibits two wonderful spiritual traits. Obedience and faithful presence. Obedience. He goes. He does what God says. 
God says, go and take the gospel to all nations and be prepared to give an answer for what you believe. And Philip does this. He knows that he's, uh, he knows the gospel and he knows his mandate to preach it. <clears throat> but not, not only that, he's open to God's spirit and God's calling and he obeys when God leads him somewhere else, even if it seems strange or, or nonsensical. So he knows God has everything planned out. So that's his obedience, but he also has faithful presence. As I said earlier, there are no coincidences with God, are there? Philip not only is in the right place at the right time, but he's ready. He is a faithful presence. And never underestimate the power of you being where God wants you to be. And where does God want you to be? Well, where are you now? Maybe it's the school gate, the office lunch table, the soup kitchen, having a chat over the fence. Caring for your children, supporting your neighbours, watering your lawn and someone's walking past. Or a story I heard the other day, someone just picking up rubbish at a council cleanup. Wherever you are is where God has called you to be a faithful presence. You are not in this stage of life by accident. You are not living where you are by accident. You are not in the job you're in by accident. God has placed you there to be a witness and a faithful presence in your community and to those who surround you. How cool is that? There are no coincidences. God has placed you there and you are privileged to be used by him when you open your mouth and speak the gospel. And like Philip, you will see joy flow around you when people come to Christ. So may we be like Philip, obedient evangelists, faithful in our presence and making the most of every opportunity, knowing that it is God who leads and guides and we are just continuing the work that Jesus began through the empowering of his Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for your servant Philip, the deacon, whom you called to preach the gospel to the peoples of Samaria and Ethiopia. Raise up in this and every land heralds and evangelists of your kingdom that your church may make known the immeasurable riches of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.